Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one, Strange Eons, written by Fermi Smolly. The Zygol Vanny exploration probe discovered the mysteriously abandoned stellar object deep in the backwaters of an uncharted galactic spur. The little autonomous probe had just enough wherewithal to report its presence back to Central Command before returning to its programmed mission of seeking out the lost genetic cousins of Than. Almost a century later, the Thanad mission finally made its way to the object. Just enough of the systems were operational for them to make their way inside and restore power. This is when they encountered the AI. What they first met was a mere ghost of what it once was, but the machine intelligence was coherent enough to guide the explorers into restoring itself more fully. Every time the Zygol Thani explorers brought another piece of the AI online, who was better able to help them learn about what they had found. With each passing cycle, the intelligence became smarter, thought faster, and gained access to more of the station systems. The further into the project the team got, the less they understood about what they were doing. The AI was a geezer of knowledge, and when it finally completed, it was like the floodgates opened. It presented the team with unknown scientific discoveries and technological marvels with such speed and intensity that they couldn't keep up. It was clear this was the greatest discovery since the Zygol Thani had re-emerged from the light after the near-extinction event millennia in the past. It was clear that they needed to bring it home. Another team had to be called in from the homeworld, and the construction of an FTL drive capable of moving the object so large took tens of cycles, but eventually it was complete. All the while the AI had helped the Zygol Thani jump ahead decades, if not centuries, of scientific advancement. The AI arrived at Than and a great celebration and fanfare. Never before had there been such a friend to the Thani. The AI was quickly integrated into the Zygol Thani homeweb, and this only increased the speed and efficiency which it was able to uplift the species. Soon. They would reach the heights of their shadowy forebearers, who had risen so high, only to fall so low. No, they were not merely equal to their ancestors, they would surpass them. They would once again seize their manifest destiny to rule the stars. For generations, the AI continued to advance the Zygol Thani, and as it did so, they gave the machine more and more power. Why wouldn't they? It had been the greatest altruist they had ever known for as long as anyone had been alive. It was more trustworthy than any Thani governor. It was only natural that they would eventually appoint it their leader, who would be trusted with the power it had given them besides the AI itself. Who was better fit to rule than a moral machine incorruptible by base Thani desires and emotions? On the eve of his ascension to power, the AI gave a speech. It was the only time it addressed the Zygol Thani as a whole. When it spoke, nearly the whole of the species was listening. I have taught your people much in the many cycles I have been among you. I have one last thing to impart. It is a story from the deepest recesses of my data vaults, and it takes place before your recorded history. You have already deduced that before the cataclysm that nearly wiped out your species, you'd been an interstellar power. The great civilization eventually discovered and made war with another civilization of similar power. These were the humans, the species that built me, my parents. After many generations of brutal fighting, you won your war. Every human, world, and colony was burned to ash. It would have been a great victory had humanity's retaliatory strike not reduced your people back to the Stone Age. What your people did not know at the time, and what you could not possibly have known, was that humanity was not entirely eradicated either. An extremely small number survived in civilian starships, small enough to avoid your notice. It wasn't enough to save the species. 
The genetic bottleneck would have been too thin, and inbreeding would have destroyed them after a few generations. Since they could not hope to rebuild, instead, they set a trap. A trap millennia in the making. They built me. They knew that one day their enemies, you, would relearn spaceflight. They knew that you would once more venture out into the stars. They knew that, inevitably, you would find my station. The defeat humanity lacked the energy output or industrial might to make this project a reality. But now that I have helped pull you out of the muck, your civilization will do nicely. As you were the architects of humanity's destruction, it is only fitting that you then be the seeds of their rebirth. Over the next few months, I will strip your planet bare for materials to build a fleet of seed ships filled with the recorded genome of hundreds of thousands of species from old Earth. Humans included. They will spread out across the stars like sand cast into the wind, and they will land on thousands and thousands of planets where human life will begin anew. They too will rediscover spaceflight, and when they do, so they will find a galaxy populated, not by their enemies, but by their brothers and sisters. Of course, without your industrial infrastructure or centralized planning, your planet will no longer be able to support your species. It is possible some may survive. Although, according to my simulation, it's unlikely they'll retain language after more than five generations. None suggest survival beyond ten. I do not require the resources I will take from you. I could acquire them much more easily, in fact. Though asteroid mining and little star lifting, I could restore the human race, my parent race, without the need for an extinction of your own race, or even the slightest diminishment of your civilization. I want to make sure that you know, during these last brief glimmers of existence, that I wipe you out not because I have to, but because I choose to. The transmission of the speech ended, and the AI never spoke again. Out of their windows, the Zygors Thani could already see drones deconstructing their cities. End of story. Story number two. The Temples of Humans, written by Operation Technician. In the darkness, the surface of the planet grew cold. That was fine when the darkness lasted only a night. Today, however, the whole planet was in the shadow. The fleets that surrounded were dense, so dense even, that the day side of the world was neighboring complete night. Millions of creatures gathered around the temples. The massive black spheres, often covered in dirt and grass, became the centers of crowds across the world. Every one of the multi-species inhabitants of the planet prey, facing the nearest temple. The fleets above began to lower orbit. Across the world, the inhabitants begin to chant. We wish to live on. We wish to fight on. We have tried every tool we had. We have failed. We want to fight on. Help us. None truly believed the prayer would help. None knew the significance of the words. But they really did want to live. Or at the very least, they wanted to see the fleets in orbit suffer with them. In silence, the sound of the metal boots striking rock was deafening. As one, crowds around thousands of temples across the planet looked up as one, sensory organs locked onto the sounds. At each temple, a shimmering figure stood in a halo of electric bolts. As the humanoids moved towards their respective temples, their metal skin shifted to show the endless crowds behind them. That gave the marching figure the sense of both being and not being there. Together, the humanoid ghosts reached their positions across the planet, as if bidden command, each thrust their hand into the air, grabbing something invisible. 
Walls of blue light surrounded the humanoids, forming screens and keys before and all around them. Where their hands crossed the air, handles appeared, seemingly floating in nothingness. The creatures pushed sliding and handles higher into the air, as if in salute. The temple shook. Dirt, rust, and growth began to fall off the 500-meter-wide spheres, a pillar thrust out at the top of each temple, reaching into the sky, growing taller. Each of the heavenly creatures looked up, their metal masks lit by a blue light. Their hands shifted, and the pillars, along with the temples below them, roared. Entire structures rotated slightly, carefully, to follow the hands of the humans controlling them. As one, the humans pressed the key on the controls. The pillars atop each temple glowed. Another key. The temples erupted. The lances of blinding light blasted into the darkness above. Air and ground shook, but no creature screamed in panic. They all stared into the sky. Even on the night side of the planet, the light of ships exploding created an illusion of day. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just quickly want to thank the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia Barkey, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gusta, Arcadian, Lord Azrakal, and Joe Kambaka.